have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to this service of worship with Center United Methodist. I am Pastor Rennie, the pastor here. I want to say a special welcome to all of you joining us online this morning. It is good to have you with us. If you are online, please uh, drop a comment or a like so that we know you're here and, and we can be in relationship with you. For those of you who are here in person on the ends of the aisle or ends of the pews on the inside, there's some pew pads. Please take a moment to fill those out so that we know that you're here too and can continue to be in relationship with you and pray for you as needed. As we uh, get started, just a couple of announcements. One, outside you may have seen there are some opportunities for you to um, share your gifts with the life of the church through reading scripture or giving flowers and greeting. So if you'd like to do that, please take a moment today and, and sign up to do that. Also, we've, uh, we've entered the season of committee meetings again as the new year gets started and so if you have agreed to serve on a committee this year um, please uh, attend those meetings as much as you are able today we have trustees and SPRC so look forward to those this afternoon um, finally uh, I have a couple of thank you notes here I want to share with you before we continue our worship First is from Jill Summers, and uh, she received a lap quilt from that ministry after the, the death of Virginia. She says, My heart was overcome with joy and gratitude upon receiving the prayer quilt. Knowing the hands that worked on this and the hands that prayed over this, I'm certain it helped me make it through such a rough health scare. So many talented people at Center, and I am blessed to be a member of such a powerful group of God's warriors. Thank you, Jill Summers. So thank you to the Lap Quilt Ministry for that. And then also, um, as I've been here, I've had the opportunity to help a number of people through our Faster's Discretionary Fund. And one this week offered this note. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving and compassion to be of help to me at this time. I'm truly grateful. God bless you and your ministry with gratitude. Alyssa. So thank you all for your contributions to the Pastors Discretionary Fund that allow me to be able to help people in times of need and crisis. And now, friends, let's stand and continue our worship with singing. Sometimes on a journey Take play. 
go to God in prayer this morning. As we do, I need your help a little bit. Whenever I say, we need you, God, I want you to answer back, we need you, God. Let's try it. We need you, God. We need you, God. Let's pray. Because temptation is woven into the fabric of our lives, and we know the weariness of long days in the empty places, and the beckoning power of sweet fruit, and the vain promises of the world, we need you, God. We need you, God. Because we see the broken before the whole, and the half-empty cup, and the unfinished task, and the thirst in freedom's quest, we need you, God. We need you, God. Because we trust in what we can see, and we are blinded by our prejudices, and we are quick to assume and slow to listen and learn, we need you, God. We need you, God. Because our need for correctness exceeds our need for righteousness, and our excuses preempt the cry of the wounded, and our celebration of blessing is mindless of those displaced, we need you, God. We need you, God. Because you came among us and breathed into our sinewy souls and healed our pain and let us wound you and loved us to the end and triumphed over all our hatred, we need you, God. We need you, God. And so we pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join together with the generations of the faithful in declaring what we believe, which 
didn't make it onto the slides this morning, but can be found in your hymnals, which are those blue books in the pews in front of you, on page 881. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Good deal. Use the book. Use the screen. Use your memory. God be with us as we proclaim, I believe in God the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of of heaven and and earth, and in in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, sit down. As you do, if there are any children that would come forward, we'll have a children's moment with Miss Caroline this morning. get a little lost. I moved the change jug so that we can all remember to bring our change to help support the work of missions in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You want to come and hang out with us? Right here? Am I on? Good morning. What? I am close to the mic. Hello. How are y'all today? So, what is your favorite food? Watermelon? Do you have a favorite food? Strawberries. Strawberries. Do you have a favorite food? Peaches. Y'all are some fruit eaters. That's good. So, can you imagine? Have you ever been hungry? Yeah. Have you ever been really hungry? Maybe they're starving like I'm going to die. I'm so hungry. (laughs) So can you imagine if you were so hungry and then your grandparents come in and they put some peaches and strawberries and watermelon right on the table in front of you and say, you can't eat that yet. You have to wait till your daddy brings the ham in and you have to eat your ham and green beans. Then you eat your fruit. Would that be hard to not just be like, yum, 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 and eat it all up? You'd be tempted to eat that fruit up, wouldn't you? Because you're so hungry. It is more healthy, but you still got to eat your good. <laughs> you still got to eat your good meats and vegetables, too. So, but you're tempted to eat it. Can you imagine? So there was this one time Jesus went up on a mountain all by himself for 40 days and wasn't going to eat any food. Can you imagine how hungry you'd be? Like, oh, I can't even go four hours without getting hungry. Really, really hungry. But it's Jesus. But he wanted to go spend more time with God. So he can do it. And say a A tortoise? Okay, a tortoise can go a long ways, but we're not tortoises and we get hungry. And Jesus surely was hungry because he's human too. But, and so Satan's like, dude, you can turn these rocks into bread. Why don't you do that? And it's Jesus, because if it was me, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, we're turning rocks to bread now because I'm starving. But Jesus resisted those temptations to prove to us that we can resist temptations. Even when it's so hard. So even when the peaches and strawberries and watermelon are, watermelon are right there in your face, you're like, mm-mm, I can't wait, even though I'm hungry. Or when you're tempted to do the wrong thing and not do like what your mommy and daddy says, you're tempted to do it wrong and like, I don't care, I'll take the punishment, I just want to do this right now. Jesus helps us remember to resist that. Okay? Do you think we can do that? Be like Jesus. That's all we got to try to do every day. Try to be like Jesus. (laughs) Sounds so easy. (laughs) We can just try. All right. Do you want to pray? Remember how Pastor Rennie shows us? 
Be just helpless. Arms out. Arms out. Clap them together. Put them on your chin. Hold them up. up. Look at your shoes. Do, hey, God. Hey, God. Thank you. For helping us, for helping us. Remember, remember to resist temptation and try to be like Jesus every day. Amen. Saying what a friend we have in Jesus, and since we didn't do it earlier, let's go ahead and do that now. Y'all can stay seated as we do. I will be reading from Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 11. Then the, spirit that, then the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might tempt him. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was starving. The tempter came to him and said, Since you are God's son, command these stones to become bread. Jesus replied, It's written, People won't live only by bread, but by every word spoken by God. After that, the devil brought him into the holy city and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down, for it is written, I will command my angels concerning you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus replied, Again, it's written, don't test the Lord your God. Then the devil brought him into a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said, I'll give you all these if you bow down and worship me. Jesus responded, go away, Satan, because it's written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil left him 
and the angels came and took care of him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Holy God, send your ministering angels and your Holy Spirit now to lead us not into temptation, but deeper into your Son, Jesus Christ, and your love through these words and the meditation of all our hearts. Amen. We're in a season right now in the life of the church called Epiphany. Now, I'm sure most of you know that word, epiphany, right? It's when the light bulb goes off in your brain. Ding! That idea comes to light. Something finally makes sense. In the life of the church, what we celebrate is the revealing of Jesus as God's Son. That time between Christmas when Christ is born, the Savior has come to us, and that season of Lent and preparation for Christ's crucifixion and resurrection where we remember and are introduced once again to those revealed mysteries of God incarnate in Jesus Christ. We started on the first Sunday of the year remembering the light of that star that guided those from other nations and other faiths to come and know that God is with us in Jesus Christ. Last week we celebrated the gift of baptism and the power of water to reveal to us our true nature as God-breathed creatures, mud pies in the image of God, I think I said. Today, we see how temptation reveals who God is and what God's ways are in the world. Now, you might be thinking, how in the world does temptation reveal anything about God? Isn't God impervious to temptation? Well, let's think about it. One of the ways that temptation reveals who God is and how God moves in the world is the way that Jesus enters into this season, this time of temptation. He's been out in the desert for 40 days. Scripture says that the Spirit sent him out there. For what purpose, we don't know. But the Spirit had a little bit of a miscommunication issue because it didn't send Jesus to the local market to pick up supplies for his time in the wilderness. Jesus didn't get the bottled water and the bread and the Lunchables that he was going to need for how long he was out there. And it turns out the Spirit had him out there for 40 days. Now, as Miss Caroline reminded us, most of us can't go four hours without something to eat, but Jesus has now been 40 days without food and with probably just enough water to survive. He is literally starving. He's weak. He's tired. And as anyone who's gone more than 12 hours without food knows, the brain starts to not work so good when it doesn't get fed all that often. And yet here, Jesus shows us that the nature of temptation is that it is most powerful and most likely to come to us not when we're at our best, not when we're at our strongest, But when we're at our worst, in a sense, God shows us that this temptation that Jesus is undergoing is like a quality assurance test. You know, the kinds of tests that they put products through, like all those commercials we saw years ago where they put those crash test dummies in cars and strap them in and then slam the cars into walls to see how they survive. It's a, it's a test of not how people do at their best. How we do at our worst is a better showing of who we really are, what we really have at our core. 
Because when we have nothing else to lean on, nothing else to draw from, nothing else to go to, no strength of our own, and we are tempted, we'll go to the closest source of strength we can think of, the source of strength that we usually lean on. Jesus shows us that that source of strength is in fact God. He leans on God and not his own strength to sustain him, resisting the desire to make for himself out of stones bread. Tempted as we are to believe that we are strong enough on our own to resist temptation, the truth is none of us is strong all the time. None of us has within ourselves the will to pass that quality assurance test, especially when we're in the midst of all of the struggles and trials and travails of our lives and the world around us. This reveals to us, though, that God is the God of strength, the one who holds up the weak, And the only way that the weak can be held up is if we don't give in to the temptation to believe that we'll always be strong or maybe even just strong enough. Jesus also shows us that one of the temptations that we are very susceptible to is the temptation to let fear drive our decision making to let fear be the thing that has us make decisions about who we are and how we're going to be in the world navy seal training is some of the most intense training of all the armed forces of all the world part of that training even includes allowing yourself to be drowned until you literally die and then be resuscitated by your teammates. It requires an insane amount of trust by the part of all of those involved, not only in the training, but on the team as a whole. And when you do this training, you go out in the middle of the swamp, and you live in these shacks, and there's nobody else but you and your team. And in the middle of the compound, there's a bell. And at any point during the training, if you decide you can't do it anymore, you just cannot stand up to the challenges that are in front of you, you walk into the middle of the compound, ding, and ring the bell. A Navy SEAL who later became someone who trained Navy SEALs said that nine times out of ten, People ring the bell not because of what they experienced in training that day, but because they were afraid they wouldn't be able to stand up to the training tomorrow. Fear is a powerful motivator. And when we're living in fear, we are more susceptible to the temptation to lean on ourselves or to lean on the power of others or the false promises of those who say that they're going to make our lives better, who say that they're going to make things the way that they ought to be. But Jesus shows us that fear is countered by living in relationship with God. You can stand on top of the highest point of the temple and look down and be not afraid and yet still have the wisdom not to throw yourself off. Jesus reminds us that tempted as we are to pretend that there's nothing that could make us afraid, The reality is we all have those places and spaces in our lives that cause us to be afraid, that cause us to doubt that good can come in the world, that cause us to think that God isn't still at work bringing about 
the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Finally, what Jesus shows us and shows the devil, that tempter who comes after us with such vigor, is that it's not what we know, it's who we know. You see, the devil quotes scripture to Jesus. Did you notice that? Did you notice that in that passage, Jesus isn't the only one who quotes scripture? The devil quotes it too, which proves that it's not enough to know your Bible cover to cover. You can know every word front to back, left to right, right to left in every original language and still not know the power of its truth, the movement of its love. You see, Satan tries to trick Jesus with verses that are out of context, but he can't be because it's not a question of knowing the words. It's a question of knowing the Word, the one who gives those words purpose and power, who vivifies them with a life of love and grace and mercy and shows us that the true meaning of these words is about living in relationship with God and each other. It requires an immense amount of trust, and that's hard. Tempted as we are to believe that we can learn enough to not have to depend on anybody else, that we can learn our way out of dependence, Jesus shows us that dependence is actually the deepest knowledge that there is. Ultimately, Jesus shows us, reveals to us, that what God is after from us is not a perfect attendance to all the ways of God, but rather a deep relationship of love that will form us toward those ways. The harder we try to force ourselves to learn and follow all the rules, the more we fall prey to trying to resist temptation by our own strength, courage, and knowledge. But what Jesus reveals to us is that those aren't the things that really keep temptation at bay. It's the relationships. It's the friendship. And thanks be to God that Jesus came and was tempted, and not just this one time. Don't think that this is the only time that Jesus faced these temptations. How many times did Jesus have people come to him and say, Jesus, we're hungry, give us bread. And could he not very well have turned the stones to bread? Could he not very well have said to the disciples, oh, no problem, three-course dinner for everybody who's here today. How many times could Jesus have exerted his power and authority and said, Romans, get out. Those who are oppressing and using religion for their own power and gain, be gone. But he didn't. He pursued deep and loving relationships, especially with those who were the most out the most set aside, the most withheld from the goodness of God's blessings. There once was a guy who was walking along and he fell into a deep hole. There was no way out of this hole and as he was standing down there, along came a doctor and he said, Hey doc, I'm stuck down in this hole, can you help me out? The doctor wrote a prescription, threw it down in the hole and kept on walking. A little while later, a pastor comes along. Hey, Father, I'm stuck down in this hole. Can you help me out? The pastor writes out a prayer and throws it down in the hole and moves on. Then 
our guy's friend Joe comes along. He says, hey, Joe, I'm stuck down in this hole. Can you help me out? And immediately Joe jumped down in the hole with him. And our guy says, well, what did you do that for? Now we're both stuck in this hole. And Joe says, yeah, but I've been down here before. I know the way out. Jesus has been tempted just as we are. Jesus has been tempted to give up his perfect relationship with God just as we are. But like a friend, he's there to guide us, to lead us, to show us how to keep trusting, keep leaning on, and keep loving the God who is always with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. seated. We come to a time now of responding to the love and care of God, the one who provides for us and gives us everything we need, not just to survive, but to thrive. If you're joining us online this morning or you're here today and would like to give but don't have something physical to put in the plate, you can pull out your phone or 
head over to our website, center-umc.com, where there's an opportunity for you to give there. As we give today, I invite you, give not because you have to, give not because I'm up here saying give, 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 give because we serve a generous God and you want to share in that generosity. Ushers, let's receive these tithes and offerings. There's torn up pages in this book Words that tell me I'm no good Chapters that define me for so long But the hands of grace and endless love Dusted up and picked me up Told my heart that hope is never gone God is in this story God is in the details, even in the broken hearts. He holds my heart, He never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. So if the storm you're walking through feels like it's too much and you wonder if he ever cares at all, hold on tight to what you know. He promised he won't let you go. The song of healing's written in his scars. God is in this story. God is in the details, even in the broken hearts. He holds my heart, He never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, for being our friend in time of need, for showing us the way out of the dark places through your Son, Jesus Christ, and for leading us by your Spirit into a new kingdom. Lord, may these gifts we offer 
build that kingdom for your glory here on earth, even as we await the day when we experience it fully in heaven and on earth, and all your people rejoice and praise your name. Amen. Let's keep on singing. Where are you now when darkness seems to end? Where are you now when the world is crumbling? Oh, I, I, I hear you say. friend we have in Jesus. Look up, children. He leads the way by the light of the star, by the water of baptism, and by showing us that with God all things are possible. Go in that hope and in that joy, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You're not threatened by the